I'd like to call the January 19th Emmaus Borough Council meeting to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For the record, the mayor is absent this evening, and Mr. Brown is also not with us this evening. Personal appeals part one. If any member of the audience has a personal appeal, please approach the podium, state your name and address, and you have five minutes to present your appeal. Good evening. I'm not quite sure if this is the time. Sure. Yeah, I go right ahead, this. Mr. Wells. Um, I I was hoping this would have been resolved this summer, but apparently it wasn't. So now I'm here to um, could you state your uh, name, please, Mr. To Walls? resolve this again. My name is Greg Walls. I am the commander of the Catholic War Veterans here in Emmaus, Pennsylvania, and I'm here on behalf of the Catholic War Veterans. <clears throat> Quite some time ago, 12, 14 years ago, the um, property of 722 Furnace Street was acquired by the Catholic War Veterans by my wife and myself, and we immediately deeded it into the Catholic Veterans Home Association. And as a uh, commander, I immediately went for uh, an assessment um, a tax exemption and was immediately granted it. And on the basis that it was annexed as part of 721 Furnace Street, which is the real address of the Catholic War Veterans. At that time, during the summer, I received uh, a refuge bill, and I came into Burrow Hall, uh, sat down with uh, Mr. Neely, and we uh, got a copy of the, um, the, what would you call it, your ordinance okay. on refuge. And we read it together, and he only asked me one simple question, at the time I came in his office, was 722 tax exempt? And I said, yes, it was. And it's part of our annex. An annex means a subdivision of, of the whole. So at that time, we read in the ordinance that you could get, you could be dispensed from paying that individual residence if you got a letter and submitted it to Burrow that the trash hauler would include, which at the time, I believe it was Mascara years ago. You guys could help me out. Then it went to Raritan Valley. I know on record we have a letter saying that our trash hauler includes the trash from 721 and 722 Furnace Street. And that's what we've been paying for. So uh, lot, this summer, I got a late notice on a refuge bill. Uh, I paid it with, with objections. Uh, I did not come here before the uh, borough council because I know at one of your meetings you brought it up and it, they were going to bring it up here. Uh, it was passed at the meeting that we shouldn't have to pay for it. And uh, now again, I got another refuge uh, bill and I was suggested that I come here in person and explain that what 722 Furnace Street, the annex, and that's how it's titled outside, we have a big sign there, it says Annex. Um, that, and I believe we have on record to this date that uh, our trash hauler is including 721 and 722 Furnace Street. I'm here for an exemption. Now I know you can't pass a law and to, to have all these little things that come up, but certainly I think com some common sense would prevail here, especially since Craig Neely was a lawyer, and he still is. And uh, we found this in the borough ordinance itself that we wouldn't have to pay as long as it was part of our business. So I'm asking for an exemption. Mr. Labenberg, question. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, was this not addressed and that's why the refuse bill was sent? We, we discussed this in committee, but um, well, you, well, is this something we bring back now and bring the ordinance and readdress it? Yeah, my it? recollection of, of your issue was that some of you felt that people were living in that place. It was a rental, correct. And it was not just for them to do business, that there were actually people residing inside the building. Now, Mr. Walls, I, I think, can probably... That's not true. ...can probably uh, speak to that. Okay. So no, you, there you, is no rent. And that's... Lehigh County's been, been at 722 three times 
uh, in the past 12 years to inspect the use of the building. Uh, last time it was, um, I could even tell you the gentleman's name, but it would came our property assessment. The, when you had our property assessment, uh, 11-30-12 was the last time it was inspected by Lehigh County a uh, residential assessor and he came in and he agreed with our use of the building that it would continue to be uh, tax exempt. Is there an apartment in there that is rental? No. There is not? No. Mr. Leibenberg. Um, what is it currently being used for? We have an office and we have our meetings. We also have... So the uh, whole house is just for, uh, for meetings? It's well, the whole, the whole house is renovated. We have a kitchen and everything. We could sell it as a residence any time we want to. But yes, there's, upstairs is an office, and downstairs we have for meetings. Is this something that we would address in committee again? or I would believe it should go through health and sanitation. I appreciate you coming in and clearing that up. I think some of council was under the impression that there was an upstairs rental in there and knowing that there isn't I think that's a different story so I would think it should go through health and sanitation committee unless anyone objects to that and would like to deal with it differently this evening I, I just have one question mr. Anders do you, do you not generate any refuge refuse excuse me, excuse me from that no okay. nothing set out the curb if any, we, any refuse that we we generate from there we just walk across the street and put in our dumpster that we're paying for Well, Mr. Shubsta. Can we get a, uh, is it possible to get a copy of that assessment that you had done on, uh, what was it 1130, 12? I can, I can give you our, our tax exemption that Lehigh County sent us. That's what they sent us. Oh, okay. Mr. Pepe, are Proper, you okay Property for? notice, uh, a primary notice of property assessment. Is that what you want? Yeah, just to see what they, what they found and stuff. Oh, no problem. Okay. We'll send it to the next Health and Sanitation Committee, which I believe would be February 19th. February 19th. We'll deal with it at that committee meeting. It would be February 19th, um, 4 o'clock here, Mr. Shubza. Is that correct? Yes. If, you, if you're available to join us February 19th here at 4 o'clock, Mr. Walls, we will deal with it at that time. Sure. Is that when you want me to bring the paperwork? That would be wonderful sure, if you great. could. Okay. Yeah, Any no, information. Thank you. Make thank copies you very for much. everybody or just one? Just one copy just should one be fine. We'll make no them. problem. Yep. Okay. Thank you for your time. Sure. Right, thank, thank you, you Mr. Walls. Yes, sir. Name and address, please. Yes. The name is Tom Campione. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'm actually a Hellertown resident. I'm here. I'm uh, the director of legislative affairs for a group called Pennsylvanians for Self-Protection. And on <clears throat> December 13th, our attorney, Joshua Prince, sent a letter to, um, to the borough um, discussing some firearms uh, uh, ordinances that appear to be in violation of Title 18, 6120. And to the best of my knowledge, there's been no response to the attorney. I've also checked um, meeting minutes since that time, and I find no discussion uh, about the topic here. And so I'm, I'm wondering if I could address the chair and uh, Absolutely, I don't. As to what the I don't status believe, might be. I don't believe I've seen your letter. Has any other member of council seen the letter? Seen it. Not you didn't need to. The, the, you guys said you guys had already adopted and we dealt with your firearms ordinances about right. three or four years ago. We did have we did have ordinances against carrying firearms in parks, in parks. We and we've that. we've changed that. It's all been amended a few years ago. Now there was now the the one thing was that um, I, I believe in their letter um, or or whatever it was. Uh, there was a, I, I think they never took the posting down at the Triangle Park. As soon as we got that letter, we checked the postings at the parks. We took down whatever signage may have been up. Um, so they, they had addressed it. Go ahead, Mr. Well, there, there, there was recently um, a, a, a bill, House Bill 80, that was enacted sure. as, mm -hmm. as 192. And 
if I may, based on uh, at least preliminary review, it appears as though uh, Chapter 16, Parks and Recreation Regulation, uh, Part 1, uh, 103, Prohibited Conduct, and I'll skip to the end of that, states that um, it is unlawful for any person to carry onto or possess in any park a shotgun or rifle or pistol or firearm and make any kind of uh, a, a firearm of any kind unless specific permission is granted for designated area by authority of the borough council. So that certainly appears to be a violation of 6120, and uh, I'm here tonight to, uh, to ask council to uh, consider rescinding that ordinance. When did, you, when did you pull that off of wherever you pulled it from? Um, off the top of my head, I, I don't know when that was done. Okay, it's I, not I something that I Yeah, we've, that. we've repealed that a that number of years, two yeah. years ago, I would guess. Oh. Uh, three. That, that's why I ask. Okay. The, okay. The we copy um, you have may not be the updated. Please, Mr. Lambert. Well, uh, also, if we have a ordinance and we amend it, the amendment doesn't go back to the ordinance, correct? It will show up as an amendment. Well, it'll show up when you recodify. If he pulled but that off, I don't know when we recodify. It'll last. show up when you recodify the code. That's why I asked when you pulled it because the the new codification of our borough code didn't show up on the website until a couple months ago. But that has been addressed. Okay. You, you should be aware that I, I, as soon as that statute was enacted, I sent an email to Shane, uh, which is the borough manager, saying make sure that these are done, and uh, I was assured that there were none. And so we are, uh, as far as I know, the, unless someone can show me an ordinance to the okay. contrary, I think the borough no, is in you. full I, compliance. I, I will check. I will check for uh, farther. My understanding was that this came directly from current ordinance as stated on the uh, on no, the No, sir. We have we've already dealt with okay. it. As soon as it happened, I was I don't there, know if it was your organization or another organization sent us a letter and we immediately took care of it. In that case, I thank you for your attention. You're quite welcome, Mr. Barrett. Something you'd like to say? Uh, yes. Did a resident give you that, or was that something that you had? Uh, give Give me what? The information that you have. Uh, I mean, what off, the top, to off the top of my head, I don't know who specifically did the research. My understanding was the research was done by Prince Law. But, you know, there, were, there, there are approximately 99 municipalities or cities across the state uh, who received similar letters. So it is certainly possible that the, uh, the person doing the research pulled something that was not the most current. Gotcha. Thank you. Sure. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else with a personal appeal? <clears throat> Upon hearing none, moving on to the community minute. Any member of council have anything for our community minute this evening? Special presentations. I see nothing. Reading of the minutes. Let's begin with the January 5th borough council meeting. Is there a motion to dispense with the formal reading of the minutes? Motion by Mr. Labenberg. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Anders. Any additions or corrections to the <laughs> meeting? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> All those in favor of dispensing with the formal reading? We have five ayes. Any additions or corrections to the minutes of the January 5th meeting? Upon hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the January 5th, 2015 meeting minutes. Motion by Mr. Labenberg, a second by Mr. Barrett. Discussion? All those in favor? We have five ayes. We have another set of minutes this evening. That would be from the January 15th, 2015, Emmaus Borough Council meeting. Is there a motion to dispense with the formal reading of the minutes for the January 15 meeting? Motion by Mr. Labenberg. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Shubsta. Discussion? All those in favor? We have five ayes. Any additions or corrections to the January 15 minutes? I, I, may, I, I checked with uh, Attorney Dimmick. So no additions or corrections? No, he said it's fine. Thank you, sir. Um, is there a motion to adopt the January 15th minutes as written? 
Motion by Mr. Anders, a second by Mr. Barrett. Discussion? All those in favor? We have five ayes. Decision on bids, nothing this evening, Mr. Pepe? No. Communications beginning with a letter from Dick Farmer that he intends to fulfill another term on the Arts Commission. I will refer that to the General Administration Committee. Uh, the next would be a letter from Lori Ramsey resigning from the Planning Commission. It has been a great experience and honor to be a part of this commission and to play a small role in the workings of this great town. When I signed on the commission, I said that I wanted to be involved in the borough somehow and to learn something on both accounts. I have. I am grateful for the experience and hope that I've served our community well. I'm especially grateful for the expert opinions and dedication of our bor borough employees involved in the commission business and for my fellow commission members who take this volunteer work seriously and with purpose. I would like to acknowledge the work of our borough solicitor, Thomas Dinkelocker, our borough manager, Shane Pepe, and Hanover our Hanover engineering representative, Chad Peters. Their guidance and expertise through our meetings has been invaluably helpful. I would also like to thank our chairman, Mike Gibson, for volunteering to lead our commission in an efficient and productive manner. Uh, thank you for your dedication to the great borough of Emmaus and your time and attention, Lori Ramsey. Is there a motion to accept the resignation of Ms. Ramsey? Motion by Mr. Labenberg, second by Mr. Anders. Discussion? All those in favor? We have five ayes. Next would be a letter from John Larson, the head coach and CEO of the Emmaus Aquatics Club, that is requesting to be able to rent the Emmaus Community Park Pool as they have for the past 31 years. We would like the agreement to allow us to use the pool from the earliest date that the pool opens until approximately August 15th. We will use the pool in the early morning prior to any scheduled pool activities. As in previous years, I'll work with Rodale to coordinate morning pool time. I will refer that to the Parks and Rec Committee. And then our last piece of communication in our binders is from Bill Kennedy, Emmaus Police Department retiree, requesting a cost of living adjustment for all current retired Emmaus police officers. And I will refer that to the Budget and Finance Committee and the Pension Board. Is there any other communication this evening? Any member of council have communication? Mr. Pepe? Mrs. Gilbert? None. Thank you very much. Moving on to a borough engineer's report, which we do not have this evening. Unfinished business part one. You skipped solicitor's report. Sorry. <laughs> solicitor's report, Mr. Dimmick. Yeah, thank My you, apologies. But, uh, no report tonight. Yes. Well, thank you. <laughs> unfinished business part one. For unfinished business part one, we have an ordinance this evening, which is establishing Landis Circle as a one way street. I'm um, assuming, Mr. Pepe, we're properly advertised and ready for second reading this evening. Correct. Um, I'll begin then with a motion to read ordinance number 1119 in short title. Would someone like to make that motion? A motion by Mr. Barrett with a second by Mr. Labenberg. Discussion? All in favor? We have five ayes. Uh, ordinance number 1119, Ordinance Amending Chapter 15, Sections 207 of the Codified Ordinances, Establishing Landis Circle as a One-Way Street in the Northern Lee Direction. Any questions on the ordinance this evening? Just, yes, sir. Uh, my only question was, I know that there, and it may still be pending if I remember correctly, about making some of the areas no parking. It's a separate ordinance. I know. Do we, would it be beneficial to take care of that in here? No. You can't. You, we had already advertised it. Okay. It's uh, too much I mean, I thought that's what we said, but I wanted to make sure that didn't get yeah. overlooked. Okay. So we'll have to advertise okay. that as a new ordinance. And that's after Mr. Andrews is going to survey all of his neighbors again. Very good, sir. Okay. I just want to be sure. I knew we talked about it, but yeah. I wasn't sure. So. Is there a motion to adopt the ordinance as read? Motion by Mr. Labenberg, second by Mr. Barrett. This will be a roll call vote. Mr. Labenberg. Aye. Mr. Barrett. Aye. Mr. Shobsta. Aye. Mr. Anders. Aye. Mr. Holtzafer votes aye. Passes with a five to zero vote. Uh, new business, I have none. Unfinished business part two. We have nothing for official action this evening. Items not on the agenda subject to Rule 9. Any member of council have anything? The mayor's report. Mrs. Gilbert, do you have anything for the mayor this evening? 
Progress. Thank you, ma'am. Committee reports, beginning with Public Works. Mr. Liebenberg. Yes, um, Public Works met here in Council Chambers on uh, January 8th. There is not, no items to take action on, but there is one note I just want to point out. Um, our Public Works Director, Mr. Daishala, Jim Farnsworth, our Codes Enforcement Officer, and Daniel, Daniel uh, Sell will be conducting inspections in February for all our historical sites. Um, it's something that we've been trying to organize so that we can long-term plan um, for any maintenance that needs to be done in the future. So um, I'm happy to see that move forward. And uh, we'll get a report on that, and we'll find out where we stand. If nobody has any questions, progress. Thank you, Mr. Labenberg. Health, Sanitation, and Codes, Mr. Shubsta. Thank you. Uh, we have one uh, official item for um, for, our com for the uh, council. Uh, we interviewed two candidates to um, fill the position uh, for the Joint Environmental Advisory Council, and uh, both candidates were well qualified. Uh, uh, Jan Ek Ek Eckmeyer and Christopher Heckler. Um, there was a uh, discussion about uh, both individuals. Uh, I wish that we had two positions available, but currently we only have one. Uh, and it was a, uh, a two, well, actually a three-nothing vote to uh, appoint Christopher Heckler for the um, position of Joint Environmental Advisory Council, uh, serving a term uh, until March 7th of 2000, 2015. So he'll be filling in a, uh, a vacancy and then he could reapply. So Thank I'll make you, that motion. Thank you, sir. There's a motion on the floor to appoint Chris Heckler to the Joint Environmental Advisory Council with a term expiring 3-7-2015 is our second. Second by Mr. Andrews. Discussion? All those in favor? We have five ayes. And uh, as you mentioned earlier, our next meeting is scheduled for February 19th at 4.30. Um, before that time, uh, Mr. Pepe and I have been discussing um, the refuse um, calculations and bills in which we're going to put together a document that we can uh, post up on the website in regards to where the cost comes from and uh, all the gray areas that are in between. Very good. Okay. Uh, and I'll report progress. Thank you, Mr. Shubsta. Parks and Recreation, Mr. Anders. Yes, I have uh, actually two items for um, to be completed this evening. I have an appointment of Griff Harold to the park at Parks and Rec Commission, term expiring 5-1-2016. And I'd like to put that in the form of a motion. Thank you, Mr. Anders. Is there a second? <coughs> second by Mr. Labenberg. Discussion? All in favor? We have five ayes. Um, also, I have, um, unfortunately, this did not make your desk. I have a request from the Emmaus Veterans Committee um, requesting a waiver for the... Um, Lions Pavilion for June 20th, 2015. Um, they would be um, having a picnic for all veterans, including Catholic War Vets, the VFW, the American Legion, and the Marine Corps League. And I would like to um, put that in the form of a motion to waive the fee for the Emmaus Veterans Committee. Um, What was the date? I'm sorry, Mr. Anderson. It is, it is June 20th. It's a Saturday. Excuse me. It is a Saturday. Saturday, June 20th. And which pavilion? It's the Lions, Lions Pavilion. Very good. Is there a second to Mr. Anders' motion? Second by Mr. Schubst to discussion. Mr. Barrett. Uh, this is a first-time request for this. Is that correct? That we I have can, no past history on it? That I can see. I do not see anything in the forms. Okay. Mr. Lambert. Is this, um, are they doing some kind of ceremony there? Um, it says the pavilion will be used to have a picnic to thank all of the members of the Emmaus Veterans Committee for their dedication and service. Um, the Veterans Committee does do several things for us here in the borough. Um, they do place the flags on all the veterans every year. They um, have a retirement ceremony for our flags. Um, they also visit the VA hospital and nursing homes, um, and they also assist with um, military service at funerals. So they do a lot for the community. And this would be, I believe, it's open to all veterans. And I'm assuming your committee has already discussed this? We, we have not discussed it. It was a, um, 
it was a memo that we it stamped October 20th and somehow has um, oversight. Yeah, it, it got through. through the new year. It is not, it's not. It's not the normal protocol to I, just I throw that. something like I, that I, out I on the. Excuse me, I'm speaking. It's not the normal protocol to just throw something like that out on the council floor I without it. I understand that, but I also. Mr. Anders, twice. Excuse me, I'm speaking. It's not the normal protocol just to throw it out on the floor like that. I understand the committee and the importance of that committee to this community, but next time, even if you would have brought it up at communications in the beginning, I could have referred it to your committee before a motion was made to give a waiver for something that we normally don't do. I'm okay with it this time, but please in the future, if you could, follow the proper protocol. Okay, very good, thank you. So there's a motion that's properly seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor of giving the waiver? We have five ayes. Thank you, gentlemen, I appreciate that. Um, we also discussed um, the Emmaus High School softball and baseball. We had um, Mr. Dr. Waddell, uh, previous councilman, um, asked us to look into if either the high school softball or baseball at this time would like to play at either of our facilities, um, baseball being a community park and softball at the uh, Williams and um, Kiwanis areas. Um, softball actually has their schedule made as well as baseball for their current um, locations which they go to. So at this time, there will be no change to where they currently play. Um, we also then discussed, as you saw at last meeting, we had the Funk 5 miler. And um, the person in charge, Rochelle Romeo, will be coming to our next meeting to discuss it further with um, more details. And with, um, with that, I'll report progress. Thank you, Mr. Anders. Uh, public safety. Mrs. Gilbert, Mr. Barrett, either one of you have a report for this evening? Uh, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, do you want to take it? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, no, there's really nothing to report on. Um, if anybody has any questions about anything, all your minutes are here as to what we had discussed. There was nothing that we took official yeah, action on, so it was just basically nice. going over things. Mr. Shubse? One question. I wanted to... Um, ask was, uh, and it's on this one also, it talks about that race. Um, what date is that race? Um, I didn't see it in the uh, I don't remember when it is. Um, Could have been, uh, I wouldn't June even want to July, say if it was June or July, I don't June remember. It was, there was, it was June. Okay. I, I do know it was June, I just do not recall the exact date. Okay, so it is, it's pretty far out. Okay. It is. There's still time. It was a Saturday, not a Sunday. Yeah, there was one per month, and each one related to a specific brewery, and we were the last one in the series. I see. Okay. Right. So, I, yes, you're correct in that we still have time to deal with that. Okay. Other than that, we're working on a graffiti ordinance to try and get uh, a handle on graffiti here in town. Other than that, if nobody has any questions, I'll report progress. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, General Administration, Mr. Barrett. Uh, we have a few items that require official action. Uh, the first two are reappointments, and I'll place them individually in the form of a motion uh, to reappoint Ellen Wilson to the Emmaus Arts Commission with the term expiring 2 7 2018. Is there a second for Mr. Barrett's motion? Second by Mr. Shubst to discussion. <coughs> All those in favor? We have five ayes. Uh, the second is to a motion to re reappoint Linda Waddell to the MAS Arts Commission with a term expiring 2-1-2018. Is there a second to that motion? Second by Mr. Labenberg. Discussion? All those in favor? We have five ayes. Uh, the next item that you'll see on your agenda is a lease, or excuse me, a lease, not a uh, newsletter uh, agreement. Um, this was not formally discussed this time at uh, GA, but it's been something that we've done for the last four years, maybe. I think we started this maybe in 2011. Um, Hometown Press is the company that's been doing our newsletter. Uh, we've been very happy. I don't believe there's anything that's different. Is that correct, Shane? No, there is. Um, they've been picking up the tab for postage, and with the increase in costs, they are asking that on occasion, um, you know, and, and they've been very good. I mean, the one thing... You know, the one thing that sets our newsletter apart from everybody else's is the fact that 
you know, the size of the ads and the amount of space it'll have to take up. They're asking for if on occasion if they can have an ad that's slightly larger than what we typically have allowed. So that they, they did put that into uh, and I apologize. I did misread it because the, the percentages actually stay the same. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, I had actually talked to Mr. Creeble about this, and then when I saw him send this and I saw the same percentages, it was just the adjustment in the size of the ad. Right. Uh, that's correct. Okay. Yeah, and um, I don't see an issue uh, with it. I'll be abstaining from this vote simply because I place an ad in the newsletter, but uh, I don't see an issue with the size. I'll make a motion. Change. Thank you. Motion by Mr. Labenberg to contract, continue to contract the hometown press to print the borough newsletter. Is there a second to that motion? Second by Mr. Schubst to discussion. Mr. Leibenberg. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is a newsletter to newsletter we can cancel at any time, or is it the actual contract? Looks like a no, year. This yeah, one looks for 2015, though. Three what do we, issues. We pay? Okay. Right. Three, three issues, issues for 2015, this one says. Yep. The contract we're entering into. I don't think we were ever locked in before, were we? No, I, and we have really no. I mean, it's no issue. Yes, we have no real reason to 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 go away from them. I mean, no, we had no, we had one person. The only the only difference, um, and and the only reason why um, you're really kind of talking about any changes is the idea that they asked for, you know, a slightly larger ad on occasion. Um, I think that's how he worded it. That's a change for you. So. And that's something that historically, um, you know, this, this council was pretty emphatic that that, that didn't happen. I, I told him that, you know, you, you understand the concept of increasing costs, and if he's picking up postage, you might consider it, but you need to decide that formally rather than just continuing to move forward. So because it's a change, that's why you're, okay. yeah, Thank that's you. why you're talking about it. Mr. Anders. But beyond that, there is no cost to the residents or us for this, correct? So it doesn't no, matter. No, it's, it's covering there, there used to be, but they've they've since picked up the cost of the postage. Oh, it's a great deal for the residents then. And postage has gone up. Uh, Absolutely. I, I believe he said something like forty percent since they've since they've started, and and their their goal was not to increase the cost for our businesses to advertise, uh, but you know they can increase you know what what Wes would charge. Or be charged for, you know, a half a page ad or, or whatever it would be a third page ad. Um, so thank you, Wes, for paying our postage. Yes. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. All right, we have a motion on the floor. It's been properly seconded to contract hometown press for three issues in the calendar year 2015, with the change of them being able to sell larger ads on a limited basis. They will continue to produce with the same. 70 to 30, 70 percent to 30 percent articles to ads ratio. Sounds like a very good deal. All those in favor? We have four ayes. Those opposed? Those abstaining? Mr. Barrett abstains. Thank you, sir. All right, and then there is one item that is not on your agenda. It is in your packet, and that is for the leasing of the spaces. Do we want to cover that? Is, did I? Oh, uh, yeah, we, we can. Had she that in my notes. Yeah, she hasn't responded yet. Okay. I mean, are you suggesting that the least, we don't... The least you know the parking spaces along Jubilee Street is what yes. you're speaking of. Yeah, you can Yeah, okay. Talk. I mean, the committee um, at our, excuse me, at the council last um, meeting received a letter uh, and uh, Switchback Pizza, which will be moving in just down the street, would like to lease some spaces. And uh, one of the things that we needed to come up with at committee level was a rate to lease those two spaces. Uh, the committee felt that $100 a month for the three spaces, which is equivalent to just over $1 per day per space, uh, was sufficient. So I'll place that in the form of a motion to charge Switchback Pizza, pizza $1,000 a month for, for three spaces. A year. And a month. Three. No, it was a month. It's, it's a month. It's $1,000. You just said 1000 did I say 1,000? Yeah, I'm sorry. I meant to say 100. 100. <laughs> <laughs> I'm adding zeros there. Yeah, that's why I was thinking. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow. Wow. So the motion is to... Did I say 100 the first one? You said... Yes. Okay. <laughs> so the motion is to lease three spaces to switch back pizza, and these would be the spaces on Jubilee to the east... East. To the east of the building. That's correct. Closest to town hall for $100 per month. That's correct. Is there a second to the motion? Second by Mr. Anders. Discussion. 
Mr. Shubstein. One question. Uh, it, we're, the three spaces that they're going to get, um, who's paying for the signage that would go up there then? We didn't discuss that. Okay. Uh, I mean, you're going to have to put signs there or something. Correct. That they'll know that they're, those spaces are have to pay for it. held for that. I would think, yes, I would think okay. we'd ask the business owner to pay for that. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? We have five ayes. Uh, I do not have any other items. We'll be meeting on the 21st at 9 a.m. Progress. Thank you, sir. Moving on to Budget and Finance Committee. The only item for official action this evening is the bill list. Mr. Shibs, if you would, please. Okay. Uh, resolution 2015-4, resolved by Borough Council to authorize payment of the January 19, 2015 bill list as follows. Bill list, $209,880.15. Payroll number one, $138,343.28. Payroll taxes, $60,227.75 for a total of $408,451.18. Done this 19th of January, 2015. And I'll put that in the form of a motion. Thank you, Mr. Shubst. Is there a second to the motion? Second by Mr. Anders. Discussion? All in favor? We have five ayes. And I believe that's it for that's budget it. and finance. Yep. Progress for budget and finance. Moving on to community relations, planning, and development. Mr. Brown is absent this evening. Mr. Shibstone, Mr. Anders, anything for the committee report? Nope. He didn't put his notes in. Nope. So <laughs> the only thing that was discussed was the um, five and ten year plans. And, and we, we basically, what we did at the meeting was we took all the plans that over the last probably ten years have been paid for. Uh, and laid them out on the table and, and what we're going to do is go through all those plans and decide like are there some projects in there that maybe the borough should look into um, some some small projects that were recommended by some of these um, uh, documents so that was basically the, the gist of the meeting that we had there was also an update from um, Main Street um, there were a couple new businesses in town that they reported um, one being a dog um, Dog sitting, dog, um, a dog, dog walker. Yeah, I can't think of the name of it to be honest. Um, and then there was a, a business that was doing um, had breastfeeding devices for 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 uh, women. Also moved in, and of course they have their upcoming. Um, they'll be part of the Snow Blast Festival with the Ice Bar. Very good. Thank you. Anything else? I'll report progress. Thank you, sir. Personal appeals part two. Any member of the audience have a personal appeal, please approach the podium, state your name and address, and you have five minutes to present your appeal. Upon hearing none, Borough Manager's report, Mr. Pepe. Uh, in your binders is the significant revenue and expense items report for the first half of January. Uh, if you have any questions on that, please feel free to ask, otherwise progress. Thank you, sir. President's business, I have nothing for you this evening. Uh, then we are down to adjournment. A motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Barrett. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Anders. Discussion? All those in favor? We have five ayes. We are adjourned at 740. Thank you, everyone.